Hi everyone, welcome back to the next part in my Ragnarok Main Paint Along series. Um, in this video, all we've got left to do really is pick out the small little details. Uh, so things like the little cable here, his emblem on his leg there. Might pick out some of these with, as uh, little lights with some OSL effect on them to make the back of the legs a little bit more interesting. Same thing here, I might pick out this little detail here with as a, a light with some OSL effect. The shoulder pad, paint the black area of the shoulder pad. There's opportunity to tidy up around the gold that I've already done. And then also pick out these two little details, the little two little runes and paint those uh, as glowing runes with a nice cool turquoise glow to them. I think that'll look quite nice. I'm gonna pick out the detail here as a little glowing light as well and on Ragnar's head it's the, uh, the banding on the top knot I might pick out a little that little detail there with a as a glowing light again with some OSL and then finally um, on the underside of the paws we haven't painted out the uh, pads on both paws then but this, this area as well and then I think that will be it so uh, let's get started okay so the paints you're going to need for this video are Bala Brown Avalon Sunset, Uriel Yellow, White Scar, Baden Black, Ushapti Bone, Dark Reaper, Rhinox Hide, Carrack Stone, Corn Red, Mephiston Red, Troll Slayer Orange, Evil Sun Scarlet, Lamia Medium, and Sotek Green. Right, so first off we're going to paint the little hazard cable here. Um, it's quite a small little detail so it shouldn't take too long. We're going to start off with a base coat of Bala Brown and we're going to water this down 50-50 so it's nice and thin. Like that. So I'm just going to paint on a nice smooth solid base coat of Bala Brown. Try not to get any on the uh, other parts of the model that we've already painted, like me, just there. The thumb eraser came to the rescue. Okay, so... Uh, Leave that dry for a couple of seconds and then we'll move on to the next stage. So for the next stage we need to take some Avalon Sunset. Add the same amount of water, so 50-50 mix. And what we want to do is we want to highlight the cable up, so we're going to work upwards. Next, we take some Uriel Yellow, water it down 50-50, and again, working our way upwards. Like that. Now to that last mix, we're going to take some white scar, add it to the mix. And again, working our way upwards. Now 
Now, what we want to do next now is actually paint in the little black banding on the cable. So we'll take some Abaddon Black, have the same amount of water, so a 50-50 mix. I want to have the banding go this direction. Space them out a little bit. You want to have it so that the, the yellow and the black sort of equal width. Need to go back to the uh, a la brown base coat, I think. Slightly widen that band there. Don't have to do this for the uh, on your Ragnar if you don't want to. You could um, paint this a nice solid color, a nice solid red or green. I just like painting hazard cables. to the black. Okay, so it's that done. And now we'll just add one quick highlight along the whole length of the cable to tie both the black and the yellow together and uh, that will be done. Okay, so for the final step, we're gonna take some Shakti bone. Water this down 50-50 again, just nice and thin like that. And then because we've always assumed that the light is gonna be coming towards Ragnar like this, I wanna paint a, a little reflection all the way down the cable. Like that. And that really helps to tie the black and the yellow together. On the back, another little reflection here. So that's that little detail done now. So I think next we'll move on to the black emblem and the black shoulder pad. Okay, so uh, we're going to paint the black area of the shoulder pad now. Um, give us an opportunity to tidy up some of the gold areas that we've painted. I come onto the black a little bit too much. When this is actually on Ragnar, this was actually going to be the top of the shoulder pad. Uh, so we need to take a base coat of Abaddon Black and Dark Reaper, 70-30 mix. Water it down again. And this is going to be the base coat so we can apply this to all of the shoulder pad I'm very careful not to get it on any of the gold or fill in the rooms too much
And then we do the same for his uh, symbol on his leg. Nice solid base coat. Be careful not to get any on the armor that we've already painted. that. Next we take some pure Dark Reaper, water it down again, like that, and we're going to apply that to the raised areas where the light is going to start to catch. Now with black it's best not to go too overboard with the highlights, so we're going to keep them to a minimum. picking that up very well on the camera but it's there back to the shoulder pad and again this is going to be the top so that. So next we're going to take some Thunderhawk Grey, water that down again like that, it's nice and thin. We're going to start focusing on the upper parts of the raised detail. Towards the ends of the little feathers. that and then on the shoulder pad a thinner line of thunderhawk gray like that. 
Okay, so for the final highlight then, we're going to take some rust gray. Water that down, it's nice and thin again. And then we're going to just be picking out the very tips of the feathers. that should just be enough to bring out the detail and the same thing on the shoulder pad very thin line Okay, so that's the, uh, the shoulder pad done now. And so we can move on to finishing off the uh, paws now. Okay, so next we're going to paint the uh, underside of the paws. So these little pads here. So to start with, we're going to take a base coat of a bad and black and Rhinox hide, 50-50 mix. Water that down nice and thin and we're going to apply that base coat to all of the padded area and the bits in between that so the same to the other paw Okay, so that's going to take a couple of coats, so we'll uh, go away and do that and then we can come back and start highlighting up the pads. Uh, I'll only show you how to do this one because the other one's going to be exactly the same. Okay, so that's the uh, base coat done now. 
So to the base coat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one part Carrack stone. A little bit more water. And then we're going to just start to highlight up the, the pads. Couple of the little details in between the pads as well. Like that. Okay, so the next step is then some pure carrack stone. Water it down fifty fifty. And we just repeat the same thing, picking out the edges of the uh, pads. So, and these are going to get roughed up and scratched as the wolf is walking about. So you don't have to make a nice straight line. You can dab the detail on if you want to help build up some texture. that it's quite hard to see on camera and then for the final highlight we're going to take some pure shapti bone water that down again 50 50 and we're just gonna add a little bit of a highlight dab that on Like that. Okay, so that's the uh, pore pads done. So you do the same for the other one, and then we can move on to finishing off Ragnar's top knot. Okay, so uh, next we're going to paint these little bands on Ragnar's top knot, uh, and we're going to do that in a nice rich red. So we're going to take some corn red as a base coat, and add the same amount of water, 50 50 mix. And you're just going to very carefully paint that in. Get a nice solid base coat.
Okay, so uh, that's probably going to take another couple of coats till we get a nice solid base coat on there. So uh, I'll go away and do that and we can come back and start highlighting. Okay, so next we're going to take some corn red and a bad and black 50-50 mix. Water that down nicely. And we're just going to paint that into the recess between the gold and the red, just to neaten it up a little bit. Okay, that's the little step done. It's quite dark, so it's quite difficult to see, but that's just neatened up the join between the gold and the red. Next, we're going to take some Mephiston red and water this down 50 50. And we're going to just run that top and bottom. Just take your time. It'll be quite easy to mess up now and go over the gold by rushing. Okay, and that's that. Then to the uh, Mephiston red, just want to add a bit of Trollslayer orange. And then the same thing again, then really just running a very thin line, top and bottom. hands as steady as you can just to okay so that's about as far as I want to take it for the red on the top knot I don't want it to be too bright so we'll move on to some of the red OSL now. Okay, so I just want to pick out a couple of areas with some like glowing lights uh, and some OSL just to create some areas of interest. So to start with, we're going to take the uh, we're going to create some red OSL. So we're going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet, Lamia Medium. And this is the detail I want to pick out. So I'm going to start by glazing the Evil Sun Scarlet onto the skin there. I don't want it to be too overpowering. It's just a nice subtle OSL to the little light. So we're going to leave that dry. Then I also want to pick out this little detail 
as a light as well. So same thing again. Nice subtle glow. It's going to take a couple of coats to build up that glow. So leave that dry. And also I want to pick this out as a, a red light. So I'm going to glaze the area with that Evil Sun Scarlet again. let it dry. By now the first area is all dry. We can go back and slowly build it up. Hopefully you can see it's starting to build up now. Find the Lamy medium helps not get tide marks, which would spoil the effect. You can blend it a lot easier. Add it on the very edge there, not too much. Okay, leave that dry. And same thing on the light at the back here. Okay, so now we've got the subtle glow. What I want to do now is I want to go and use some Evil Sun Scarlet, water it down a little bit. So there's no Lamia medium involved this time. So I'm going to focus on getting the Evil Sun Scarlet onto the, the light itself. That's all you want to paint is the object that's going to be glowing itself. So the light on his backpack. Like that. Same thing here. And this you want to actually build up to a nice solid base coat. Like that. Okay, so for the next stage, you need to take some Troll Slayer Orange. Water this down 50 50. Just want to highlight these lights up. So you're going to paint a little dot in the center of that light. And this, going to paint around the edge of the, the light. Same on this one. That. Okay, so for the next stage, you're going to take some Uriel Yellow, water it down again, and on this light, pick out a little dot in the middle like that on the
that. And then you're going to take some white scar, water it down again. Get a really small dot in the very centre. Like that. that I could probably afford to go back with the, um, the red glaze then maybe make that a little bit more intense glaze over the whole thing as well just to tie it all together maybe can't see it very well on the camera but I'll um, I'll take some pictures That's your, all your red OSL done. The, the last thing we need to do is the turquoise OSL and the glowing runes. Okay, so um, next part we need to do, and the final part really uh, for the painting anyway, is these runes. I'm going to pick those out in a nice turquoise and make them glow. I want to add like a little, like similar to what we've done with the red there. So I want to put a turquoise light with some subtle OSL. One thing I did after I finished doing the red is I added some subtle red Evil Sun Scarlet and Lamium Glaze to the underside of the leg because the light would just catch the bottom part of this armour here. I hardly make it out, but it's just a nice little effect. And I want to pick out this little detail as a glowing light just to add a little bit more interest because this is quite a large area of gold. I've decided not to do the runes in OSL. Doing OSL on a light background doesn't always come out very well, so I thought I would leave those as they are. Okay, so to start with, we need to take a base coat of Sotec Green and Lamia Medium. Two parts Lamia Medium to one part Sotec Green. Nice thin glaze. I'm going to glaze around the object that we want to be glowing. I don't want it to be too overpowering again though, so we'll keep the radius quite small. A little bit of a glow onto the armour. Leave that dry. Same things with the glowing runes as well. effect will be quite subtle to start with so we'll leave that there and round this detail okay so similar to the red now we'll take some oh, uh, Sotec green no Lamia medium this time so we want to build up a nice solid base coat water it down a little we're going to paint the object that we want to be the source of the light. In this case, the little light in the back of his leg. Same thing for this detail here. A 
of that. Now for the runes, we need to be using very, very thin paints because we don't want to block up these rune details. So we'll take some Sotec Green, White Scar, and some Lamia Medium in uh, one part Sotec Green, one part White, uh, white Scar, to two parts Lamia Medium. To the previous mix, you're just going to add another part white scar. Really just want to run that into the rune. Okay, so now we're going to take some pure white scar, water this down a little bit, it's quite thin. And then we're going to give a little final highlight, pure white scar, the outside of these lights, make sure that they, to make them look like they really are glowing. Same for the uh, one on the back of the leg. In these runes, I like to strengthen the white. Okay, I'll take some better pictures because it, like, it's looking like great on the camera. But uh, there's a subtle glow around the runes. Um, just picked up on the rim, the gold rim of the shoulder pad as well. 
Okay, so I think that's it for this video um, and for the painting as well. We've painted all the details now, so in the next video, I think we'll need to focus on adding this to a nice display plinth, which will be a nice little 40 millimeter round plinth like that, which is the one I like to base all my miniatures on. So we'll be adding it to that and then we'll be tying in the sculpted detail by adding some sand and some modeling putty getting that painted up and then we can look at uh, getting them assembled then okay so i hope you enjoyed that video and i'll uh, see you in the next one real soon right so i've created a hashtag for everybody to use over on instagram if you want to share your progress with me we can all see what everybody else is doing uh, it's hashtag ragnar paint along and remember if you guys enjoyed watching this video hit that thumbs up button Make sure you subscribe to my channel and if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section below and I'll see you guys back here soon.